What's going on, guys? My name is Dustin, and this is End on a Make. And tonight, unfortunately, we have to talk about those NBA referees. Um, it's a complaint that it seems that you know people have every single time. Um, they mention you know either why they stopped watching the NBA as much or why they're kind of out on the NBA altogether. And it just it seems like every night there's a new controversy about the officiating. And tonight was no different. We had a really good slate of games, but now all anyone can talk about, even though, you know, we had some great competitive close games, some comebacks. We had huge, huge uh, performances from some key players, and still all we can talk about is the officiating. So we'll start with, so I don't even know where to begin. Um, I guess we'll start with the Warriors and the Blazers which was a, a great game, two super competitive teams. They always seem to play each other really well. You have, you know, the Steph versus Dame component of it too. And, you know, it comes down to basically this charge call that Damian Lillard drew on Draymond Green. And, you know, of course all the Warriors say, no, it wasn't a charge, his foot was moving, and of course – Blazers say no, Dame was there. He was outside the restricted area, and you know the official the officials review it. It takes forever, and they come back, uphold it, and the war or the yeah the Warriors go on to lose. The Blazers get the harder to win, and it was a great game, and it was a very competitive back and forth game. But with that one instance, all of that is gone. You don't get to talk about Steph's unbelievable performance all the weird crazy circus shots he was hitting dame super clutch threes at the end no all it becomes is is oh man did you see that bad call so then you go back a couple hours to the utah jazz philadelphia 76ers game which is two the two leading teams in the nba the two number one seeds like if everything went chalk that would be the nba finals and the Jazz looked good, and the Sixers looked good, and it was just such a good close back and forth game until Royce O'Neal saves the ball going out of bounds, and it gets reviewed, and it gets reviewed for like, I don't even know how long they were just staring at that. And it seems, I mean, to me, pretty clear that he saved that ball and he was not out of bounds, but, um, uh, you know, if you have a different take, let me know. Um, I mean, I understand it's a close thing like that. It's a close call. And so they, they give Philly the ball. Philly ties it up, goes to overtime. Donovan Mitchell gets ejected in overtime. Uh, he gets these two quick texts, and he gets thrown out. And this is a trend that we've seen over the last couple weeks that is just getting worse and worse, and I don't understand what it is. Like the, So the 76ers get the win. Now, the Lakers had one tonight in their game against the Kings that was not quite as impactful um, as, like, you know, costing the game. But uh, Montrez Harrell got hit with a tech for screaming and one, which if, especially now with, like, limited to no fans in the stands, you can hear people say and one about 150 times a game. And Montrez got teed up for it. And don't know why wasn't like he said it particularly aggressive or, or anything like that. Like, it's not like he, like, screamed it in an official's face or something. He just said and one, which is, I think, you know, something, like I said, that you hear it 200 times a game. Every play that someone drives to the basket, they're going to shout and one. So last night, uh, Tuesday, or, yeah, Tuesday night, you had the Lakers also involved in a in a weird controversial technical foul call slash ejection with Devin Booker. So like five minutes in to the second half of that big showdown in the West between the Jazz or the between the Suns and the Lakers, Devin Booker gets tossed for rolling the ball back to an official. He got teed up for complaining about a call and then rolled the ball back after the words while he was arguing the call, but he wasn't like demonstrative about it. He wasn't being, you know, aggressive he was like oh and he threw the ball back and boom he's gone and i was gonna do a video on that one originally yesterday because he had just been named player of the month for the western conference that morning tuesday morning he was announced as an nba all-star reserve a few days ago 
then he gets announced Western Conference Player of the Month, with which that is a n- whole discussion in and of itself, how a Player of the Month can be left off the original All-Star team and has to be an injury replacement, but that's we don't have the time for that one. And he gets ejected. Now, the Suns went on to win that game. They did beat the Lakers. It was a very big win for them with him getting tossed so early, but, like, it's not a good look on a nationally televised game against the defending NBA champions with, you know, stars like Chris Paul and Devin Booker who are riding the train of, you know, Phoenix is surging. They have two all-stars for the first time in a long time. And, you know, fans felt cheated. So you go back even further, and it's just it, – this is crazy, but this is how it's been for the last few weeks. You have unnecessary ejections for J.J. Redick with the ball toss. You have the Draymond Green one that ax- that actually cost them the game in the late seconds against Charlotte where he got the two quick fouls, they hit the free throws, and then ended up winning the game. And all in all, it's just become such a problem with officiating. And I think the biggest problem is it isn't one thing. Like, it's not like, oh, they're really quick to call tax if you argue. Or, oh, they're really quick to, to call a tech if you throw the ball back in a weird way. Like, they're calling them for everything. And you have, you know all these inconsistencies in how the game is called anyways too so like some games like a good example for this is trey young which i know it's a hot topic with a lot of people is you know his play style and how people like it or don't like it uh similar to you know how james harden the houston years have gone or did go i guess (laughs) um but like that you have games where trey young will take 12 free throws and the hawks offense looks unstoppable and then you have games where he doesn't attempt any or like three or four and the team is just stagnant and flat. And, you know, it's not like he's playing any different. He's probably still doing his his moves. He's in his bag. But when you're not getting the calls and you're trained to get the calls, it, everything kind of just comes crumbling down. And but that game to game inconsistency is making the league, you know, it's turning it more to be players versus officials. And that's something that, you know, has always kind of been there, but it's never been this pronounced. You have, you know, people hopping on Twitter after the game to complain about <coughs> to complain about refs. You have players commenting on other games that they're watching and being like, what? That's a co- that's the call? Like, how do you do? Like Donovan Mitchell, like uh, two nights ago, was saying, like, that's a foul. And now here he is getting tossed. And it's just like, it really seems like a lot of, these calls are coming from these refs that are like taking things personal or that are holding these grudges and that's a that's a lofty uh, accusation i understand that but like when you couple that with you know five minutes at a time to review a play that the team in new jersey can diagnose and and just describe perfectly on maybe two replays usually one but maybe it takes steve javi like two and then you get the, like, oh, no, it's out of bounds. Oh, no, yeah, that's a foul. Oh, yeah, no, his foot was moving. And, like, I understand that, you know, experience is probably a part of that, too, and the angles. But, like, if, if the camera angles in Secaucus, New Jersey, are that much better than what the refs are seeing in the arena, and you can get someone on a broadcast team to be like, oh, yeah, that's a foul, 30 seconds after, like, just have them make the calls. Just let reviews go to there and be determined by them and leave the other refs there, and, like, I know that pro- that problem would be then the ref that's there is, and, is there, and is, yeah, it's a whole can of worms, and so that kind of is where, where we are. <coughs> We're stuck with, you know, players that don't know what the rules are, refs that seem to be changing the rules more and more every game, and as a result, the watchability of everything is just kind of, kind of not where it was. And the NBA is a league that usually has pretty high approval with with fans for how, you know, how they try to implement all these changes and they do all these progressive things that compared to, you know, other leagues that are like, no, it's going to be this way because that's the way. And so the NBA has always gotten, you know, gotten credit for that. And to see them just kind of like kind of just dig their feet in and, and be like, oh, this is the plan. This is what we're doing on the officiating of all things when it's something that's become such a hot button issue with players with team owners that get suspended and fined over it with fans that continue to argue about it it just feels like it's getting to a point where you're going to have some you know high profile incident with referees 
not like you know the Donahue scandal. Like you know, I don't think you're gonna see point like actual point shaving and stuff like that. But like imagine like say we get the Lakers back in the finals and it goes to Game Seven and Game Seven LeBron James gets thrown out in the first quarter and it's like a it's like a nothing nothing call. It's something where he you know he says something and an official like. He complains like, "Oh, it's a foul!" Like we see him do a thousand times a game, and they're like, "Nope, see ya." And so now you're out, the biggest player in the league, in the biggest moment, and like that type of stuff would be like a just a publicity disaster for them, because of course you know people want to watch stars, people don't want to watch officials, and it just it feels like things are kind of hitting this tipping point, but I don't know if you can call it that because in order to have been a tipping point you would have to know that things are going to change and it just doesn't feel like that's close and I think that's a shame because it's really taking a lot of the fun out of watching the game uh but I don't know that's kind of just random thoughts after you know watching a few of the games seeing the replays kind of hearing you know what guys had to say about it and I just yeah I don't know how to fix it. Um, if you if you agree if you think there's a a thing that they can do to fix the officiating if there's a change that you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, let's let's talk it out in the comments. Um, if you've watched this far, thank you, and uh, and we will be back soon. Thank you.